Adventures in Time and Space, transcribed in future tense. The National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with Street and Smith, publishers of astounding science fiction, bring you Dimension X. The rocket drove through space like a silver fish in an endless tank, the stars in black velocity swirling by. Inside her case, tiny, finite specks of humanity controlled the tremendous power that impelled her so relentlessly toward the other galaxies. Who were these men? What mad, fantastic need and desire that caused them to abandon Mother Earth and venture to the ends of the universe? Captain Hollis! What is it, Stone? Magnetic storm, dead ahead, sir. And the aperture? About a hundred-mile gap between elements, sir, but shifting rapidly. Switch on the radar screen. Let's have a look. Yes, sir. There are asteroids in it, Captain. I see that. Thank you, Stone. Sir? What? Any change in course? What for? The storm, sir. If I decide to change course, I'll issue the order. At the rate we're approaching, it'll be too late to issue an order. Mr. Stone, do I need to remind you who's master of this ship? Look, sir, there are 25 other lives to be considered besides your own. Those asteroids shipped at our course. That's enough, Stone. It's not enough, Captain. Return to your post. Captain, for God's sake, don't be pig-headed about this. There's a magnetic storm dead ahead. Are you going to risk the lives of all of us just so you can hang your hat on some lousy interplanetary record? We know this means a lot to you. Sure, you can be fleet admiral if you beat those Asiatic ships to Venus. That's fine, but... We value our lives. I happen to value my life just as much as any man aboard this craft, Mr. Stone. But I wasn't brought up to be a lily-livered dare nothing. Now get back to your post, or I'll have you court-martialed. Well, Mr. Stone? Okay. Okay what, Mr. Stone? Okay, sir. <laughs> Impudent young pig. Maybe he's right with us. Well, you stick to being ship's doctor. You're good at that. I'll navigate this fish. Really, Captain, only I'd hate to pile up on some little asteroid, especially when a simple thing like changing course... Simple thing? Do you know what a change in course would mean? The slightest deflection would throw us a million miles off at this speed. It would take days to get back on the vector. By that time, one of the Asiatic ships would have landed on Venus and claimed the whole blasted planet. We're in a race, Charles. Well, I suppose they did claim Venus. There's nothing but rocks and jungle anyway. It isn't that it's the idea of someone beating us. <laughs> you know, Lewis, I always get a little bit jittery when men are willing to die for symbols. Well, you're a cynic. Mm, maybe. Get Mollis! Get Mollis! Mollis. What is it, Lester? Captain, the radar tracking shows a foreign object. Get ahead. What? Check your screen, sir. Good Lord, the whole blasted storm has shifted dead on. As it room. Vision chamber. Fire up your starboard cyclotron. Aye, sir. You can't make it in time, Lewis. Listen to that radar bounce. Shut up. Now hear this. Now hear this. Condition red. Fasten your space suit. Over the vision chamber. Emergency blast. Aye, sir. It did off. You think we'll make it? We've got to make it. Suppose one of those asteroids decides to ship. Will you shut up? It doesn't sound good, Lewis. Another five seconds. Four. Three. Two. No, it's a meteorite. Good God. Look out! Stone, is that you? Who is it? Captain Hollis. 
happened? We struck an asteroid. Ship blew up. Is anybody else alive? I don't know. I can see some space suits floating in space not far from me, but I don't know if they're alive. Maybe they just don't hear us. Their radios are working, they do. Hello? Hello, somebody? Doc, is that you? Lewis? Yes. Thank God. Anybody else alive? Stone. Hello, Doctor. Oh, are you all right? Okay, so far. That's three of us, anyway. Lewis? Yes? We... We seem to be moving away from each other. That's right. I can hardly see you now. It's the momentum. We were all thrown in different directions. Since there's no friction, we'll pick up speed. Isn't there some way we could stick together at least? I'm afraid not. If there's no friction, then there's nothing to stop us. That's right, Stone. But then we'll we'll just keep falling. Maybe forever. Not forever. You'll fall until you get into one of the gravitational fields of some planet. After that, you'll fall toward the planet. Mother in heaven, what a way to die. Nobody's going to die. Those Asiatic ships will be along this way. We can radio to them when they get in range. Aren't you forgetting something, Lewis? Yeah, what's that? The commanders of those other ships may not be quite so willing to run through a magnetic storm. They may have altered course. If they have, they won't come within a million miles of us. We'll have to take our chances on that. It's a long way down. A long, long way down. Let's have no talk of that kind, Stone. I don't want to die. Stone, I said can it. Can it yourself. What? You heard me. This is a mutiny of one. Don't try to put your rank on me now, mister. You'll be 10,000 miles away in another hour. Oh, help me. I'll have you caught, marshaled when we're picked up. Let's not kid ourselves. Nobody's going to be picked up. I've got a few things to get off my chest before we lose contact with each other. Don't let it drop. Let him talk. Thanks. Your ship was a bad ship, and you were a bad captain. I hope you'll break when you hit the moon. Thanks for the goodwill, Stone. That isn't all. I believe there are different kinds of deaths, Captain. Just as there are different kinds of lives. Yours should be pretty interesting because you've been dead for years. Oh, let him. When was the last time you had an honest human feeling, Captain? I'll bet you don't even remember when. I don't think you're capable of any kind of strong feeling. Do you have a wife, Captain? I'll bet she won't miss you one bit. Children? I have a son. Little boy. Maybe he'll grow up to be a hero like his daddy. A tin hero with a piece of stone where other men have hearts. Are you quite finished? I've said it. Well, so long, Doc. So long. I'm headed for the sun. Somehow I don't like the idea of falling into the sun. I'm going to take a quicker way out. No, Stone, don't be a fool. I'm going to smash the faceplate on my helmet and let the oxygen escape. Stone, don't do it. We're going to be rescued. Stone. See you all in some other universe? He was headed for the sun. I can barely see him now. Look, like Mercury for me. How about you, Lewis? I'm headed for... For Earth. Funny, isn't it? That I should be going back to Mother Earth this way. I'm nothing but a human meteor, Charles. When I hit the Earth's atmosphere, I'll burn like a match. Charles, can you still hear me? I can hear you. It's getting fainter now. We must be several thousand miles apart. We should be able to talk for another 20 minutes or so at the speed we're falling away from each other. What are you thinking about, Lewis? I was thinking about Stone. What he said. Don't let it get you. You know, in a way, he was right. He was insane. The shock knocked him off balance. No. Each of us dies in a different way. Each of us has his own life to look back on. Huh? Uh, What's that? I don't know. It sounds like... Lester. Hello. Hello, Lester. Can you hear us? I don't 
think so. It's possible that the sending unit of this radio is working, but the receiving unit is damaged. All the way. do stuff to keep up the nerves. Right there. Hello. Hello. Anybody alive? This is engineer's mate, Ali Lester. Hello. Mother of heaven, ain't there somebody that talks to me at least? Lester. Lester. Can you hear me? We can hear him. Poor devil may have forgot to switch on his receiving unit. Well, there are three of us again anyway. Uh, there isn't much comfort. Maybe... Maybe he stores the way he is best. Don't be a fool. They're going to be picked up. I doubt we it. We must. I must. I have too much to accomplish in life to die like this. A fellow like Stone or Lester, they come a dime a dozen. But I was in line to be commander of the whole fleet. You know what that means, Charles? Commander of the hemisphere. No, I don't know what it means. I never wanted to be commander of anything but myself. And I never even came close to that. Helen was counting on it. Stevie, too, in his own little way. It's hard for Helen. Stevie's too young to understand. He'll know. He'll know his daddy went out with a ship. Like a man. They'll give him a medal. Lewis, I'm beginning to think that maybe Stone was right about you. Huh? What do you mean? Oh, nothing. No, no, Charles. I want to know. We've shipped together a good many years. You never told me what you really think of me, whether or not you've envied my success. I'd like to know now. We've nothing to do but talk anyway. I have never envied anything except the fact that you're falling back to Earth, Lewis. I've admired you as I admire some sort of perfect machine. But that's where it stopped. You know the trouble with you, Lewis? Well? You can't cry. What? You can't cry. Well, men don't cry, only children. That's what I mean, Lewis. You can't cry. I don't know what the devil you're babbling about. Well, uh, skip it. No, no, look I here. There's one thing... I had a wife on Mars. I had a wife on Jupiter. And I had a wife on Venus. <laughs> Everyone I met money and treated me too well. What's he babbling about? I don't know. He seems to be reminiscing about his life. I had some nice times, I did. Called Roxy. <laughs> he didn't know about any of them others. Roxy. Married 15 years and she still looked like a schoolgirl. <laughs> and there's a boy, too. What are he's doing now? He likes his heart and some mischief. I don't know what I can think of all. I said to him, I said, now, my son, take good care of your mom and don't get fresh with the girls. He thought me if he didn't wink at me and smile at winning smile of his and say, all right, Dad, take care, you come back well. Oh, no, we miss you terrible much. Oh, well, Eddie, listen, you can't complain. You've had the best of it and some to spare. Mm. Simple soul. Too simple. I am real. Why? Because he has all that to hang on to. Women always write me. I ran from them. Always wanting them and jealous of men like Lester for having them. And jealous of him for being able to spend money without fear. And for as much happiness as he could have in his own wild way. Haven't you ever wanted that? Don't be a fool. The difference between us and Lester is that he lives in the present. He gets into the experience of the moment. You and I, Lewis, we live in the past and in the future, but never in the present. Could we change the subject? I thought you wanted to talk. Well, let's talk about something else. Charles? Charles? Charles, are you there? Charles, answer me! I just switched to my auxiliary battery, I'm sorry. Well, don't... Don't do that. Afraid to be alone? I've never been afraid of anything in my life, and you know it. I wonder. It's a long way back down. Why doesn't he shut up? Lewis! What? Lewis, I... I got myself into a meteor swarm. Some little asteroids. Meteors? I 
think it's the Glamadome cluster that goes out past Mars, then swings in towards Earth once every five years. I'm right in the middle of it now. It's like a big kaleidoscope. All kinds of colors and shapes and sizes. God, is beautiful, all that metal. I'm going with them. They take me with them. Well, I'll be doggone. Remember when you were a kid, Lewis? Held a kaleidoscope to your eye? Gave it a twirl? That's what I'm part of now. Keep talking. I can barely hear you now. They're taking me off, Lewis. Hold on. Charles! Charles, don't leave me alone like this. Charles! 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 over some skinny, misbegotten slut of a wife. Rocks. My wife is beautiful. Understand? Beautiful. Like marble. Well, like chiseled marble. You'll find herself another man. She'll have some more good time. No, no, she won't. She'll be faithful to my memory. <laughs> Helen. Helen, you will be faithful, won't you? You'll never forget me. Norway. I won't listen. Captain Hollis, alone with yourself and your thoughts and your memories, going back to Earth like a human rocket and remembering. Lewis. Lewis, is that you? Yes, Helen, it's me. Have you? Didn't you know? But I thought... I mean, we quarreled. Oh, I've forgotten about that. I, uh... I had some trouble, Helen. We won't talk about it. You're home now. That's the important thing. Stevie is so excited. Stevie, where is he? Right here, darling. Stevie? Stevie? Daddy! Daddy! Hello, son. You're going to stay with us this time, aren't you, Daddy? You're going to stay home and we'll go fishing and play pool together. Just like you promised. Well, Stevie... Uh, I'm collecting fish on that. I've got a whole collection of them. All different colors. Would you like to see them? Yes, I would, son. Uh, I'll go up and get them. I've got them in my room. Don't go away, Dad. I'll be right back. I won't. I won't go away. He's uh, quite a little guy, isn't he? I'm glad you're finally getting together with him. What? What do you mean, Helen? You've always seemed so... Well, detached from him. Steve is a sensitive little creature. All he ever wanted from you really was just a little affection and respect, Lewis. Just a little respect for the things he felt and wanted. I've been a good father. Nobody can ever say I haven't been a good father. Certainly not you, not after what happened. Don't get defensive, Lewis, please. I'm trying to bring us a little closer together. I've given him everything a boy should have. Toys, boxing gloves. I've taught him to hunt and take care of himself. Yes, you've done all those things. Well, then. It's just, well, sometimes when he's come to you, he feels so alone. All he wants is for you to put your arms around him and reassure him, that's all. He's going to be a man. I don't want him to be soft. What is it, Lewis? What is there about being soft that you despise? Sissy's a soft. Christ. Now, don't start that business again, will you? I'm trying to make you understand, please. I understand what you're trying to do. You're like all of them. I want to make you a woman. Like them. 
They want to drain you of your manhood so they can control you, manipulate you. You won't understand, will you? You won't trust me or anybody else, including yourself. Now you're talking belly wash again. Oh, let's not build that wall between us, Lewis. Not this time. I had it all planned when you came back. We could out to the beach. Remember the spot where we used to swim? In the moonlight, you can see the water all luminous and green. And then we could have a picnic supper there, just you and Stevie and me. Stevie could sleep on the blanket, and we could go for a swim. Maybe, maybe we could recapture it, Lewis. It wasn't always like this. Maybe if we went back. I'm sorry, Helen. I'd like to, really. But, uh, well, I'm shipping out tonight. Tonight? I've got a new command, a new ship. Having lunch with the Admiral this afternoon. But you said you'd stay. This is an important thing, Helen. This is the most important thing that ever happened to me. More important than going for a swim. You don't get a chance of being fleet commander every day. You can go for a swim anytime. Yes, but we never do. Now look, honey. Ever since I was a cadet, I've been pointing toward this job. It's big. If I'm a success... You can name your own ticket. Big house up in Connecticut. Chauffeur. Find a school for Steve. I want you, Lewis. Now, don't be unreasonable. Don't you be unemotional. What? I said don't be unemotional. I don't understand. No, I don't suppose you ever will. Let's not quarrel. Why do we always end up quarreling? Well, it's almost time now. Lewis. Once more. Goodbye, Helen. Say goodbye to the boy. All right, Louis. Goodbye. Helen. Where are you, Helen? Helen. Ha. Oh, no. I must be going out of my mind. The whole thing was nothing but a dream. If only I had someone to talk to. Captain? Captain Lewis, is that you? Lester? Yes. Yeah. No, it's just another part of the same nightmare. Captain Lewis, sir. Can you hear me? Why must I be tortured like this? Yeah, if you can hear me, for heaven's sake, sir. I, I found a tube loose in this receiver. I, I can hear you talking to yourself. Lester? Lester, is it really you? Yes, sir. Thank heavens, Captain. Are any of the others still alive? Stone went to the sun. Dr. Carter went off with a meteor swarm. The others are scattered all over the universe by now. I'm headed right for Earth. I'll be in the orbit soon. It's good to hear your voice, sir. I was going insane all by myself here. Seems like I've been singing and talking the old bloody night. We heard you. I'm glad we can reach one another. Yeah, me too, sir. Are you really glad, Lester? I should think you'd hate and despise me. Why, sir? I could have saved us all by changing course. Well, the way I see it, Captain, you did what you believed in. That's the way each of us has to do. Thank you, Lester. Yeah, how long do you figure we got, sir? Not long, I'm afraid. At least not me. It's a terrible thing, ain't it, Captain? I mean, knowing you're going to die and not being able to do anything. At least you've got pleasant memories. Me, sir? <laughs> no, I never mind the hell of being. I should think you'd have some good thoughts to remember yourself. I? I never lived, Lester. Sir? It's true, I never lived. But you were wise. We were strangers. We never knew each other. A son? A son. Lester, would you believe it if I told you I'd never put my arms around the boy and let him know how much I loved him? Oh, it's hard to believe, sir. It's true. It's odd that you talk like this, Captain. I always envied you your position. You were commander. I thought so, too, but I know better now. My whole life was nothing but a running away from my own feelings. I had everything I really wanted. All I had to do was reach out my hand. There was Helen Stevie, pleasures. And I turned my back and looked at the stars. When they came to me filled with their love and their warmth, I ran. I fled to the stars and to the ends of the universe. It was all so wrong. How do things like that happen to us, Lester? I don't know, sir. We were going to be divorced. Helen and I. Oh? Stupid, idiotic. Oh, well, maybe you'll be picked up, Captain. There's lots of spaceships taking off from Earth. Maybe 
Only one of them will reach you before you hit the atmosphere. If I dare to hope, we aren't that lucky, Lester. Not many get a second chance. Well, keep hoping. I can see you now, Lester. Mother Earth, big and green and rich. Won't be more than a few minutes at this rate. Oh, if there was something. Captain. Captain, you're still there? Yes, I can feel the friction starting now. I'll burn in a minute. And I'll be scattered like ashes all across the land. Funny, that's a useful act, isn't it? To help other things grow? No, I don't talk like that, Captain. I'm sorry, Lester. You're a good man. I hope they rescue you. Well, I believe you're a good man, Captain. Maybe, Lester. Maybe I am, after all. Oh, yeah. He just got a bit twisted, Tommy. That's all. It wasn't your fault. No, no, it wasn't my blame. Funny. Sir? I feel a sense of calm now. Almost relief. Did you ever get out of a cold shower and feel like a new man? Clean and ready for breakfast and a new day? I have a feeling like that. It's a beautiful old earth, Lester. Good to go home. I wonder if anyone will see me. Emma! Emma! I just wanted to see the ocean and the stars. Are you cold? No. Mom? Yes, darling. When's Dad coming back? I don't know, Steve. I don't know. Mom? Hmm? What's the matter between you and Dad? Nothing. Oh, nothing you'd understand. Don't you love each other? I suppose in a way we do. It used to be quite different. Long ago, when you were a tiny, tiny baby, your father and I used to come down here and swim at night. I was the first girl he ever loved. And then somehow, something happened. He got frightened or something and we sort of lost each other. Oh. Come here, Steve. What's wrong, Mom? Oh, I just feel a little chill. Perhaps we'd better be getting back. It's almost your bedtime. Okay, Mom. Mom! Look up there! A, a falling star! Yes, I see it. Just fell right this way. Did you see it, Mom? A falling star! Make a wish, son. Make a wish. You've just heard another adventure into the unknown world of the future. The world of... Next is presented transcribed each week by the National Broadcasting Company in cooperation with Street and Smith, publishers of the magazine Astounding Science Fiction. Today, Dimension X has presented Kaleidoscope, written for radio by George Leffert from the story by Ray Bradbury. Featured in the cast were George Santos as the captain, Leon Johnny as Lester, and John Alexander as Helen. 